Press the memory button. The pattern number light comes on. We'll put the pattern selector switch to the middle, opposite the house and the boat. Two motifs, A and B. We'll enter 100 for our stitch pattern. Press the memory button. The light on the bottom of the boat on the card comes on. The machine's asking us where we want our pattern to begin. The bottom of the cherries is row one. Press the memory button. The light at the top of the boat comes on. Our cherries finishes on row 14. Press the memory button. The light at the left of the boat comes on. The left edge of our graph is one. Press the memory button. The light on the right of the boats comes on. We can see the edge of our motif is 20. Press the memory button. Now, we need 28 stitches for this first motif, and we're going to have the central eight in plain stocking stitch. So our motif will go from orange 32 to orange 5. We're still going to have the edge of our graph on the edge of our patterning needles. The machine is asking us where we want our first needle position, the edge of our picture to be. We'll enter orange 32, press the memory button. Where do we want our patterning to begin on the garment? We'll enter orange 32, press the memory button. Where do we want our patterning to finish? We'll enter orange 5, and press the memory button. The light at the left of the house on the card has come up, and the machine is asking us about the motif that we're going to knit on the other side of our garment. We don't want to knit the little cherry this time. If we look at the graph, the big cherry begins on stitch 10, so we'll enter 10. Press the memory button. We'll look at the graph again, and the cherry finishes on 19, but we don't want our cherries to kiss when we knit them, so we'll finish the pattern on stitch 20, leaving a spare stitch between the cherries. Press the memory button. We'll knit two cherries, so we'll have our cherries begin on green 5, and we'll need to finish on green 26. The machine is asking us where we want the edge of our pattern to be. We'll have the edge of our motif, the first needle position, at the edge of our patterning needles. So we'll start on green five, and we'll pattern on green five. And we'll finish our patterning on green 26. The ready light has come on. The machine is ready to knit the motif. Take the carriage past the turn mark and turn the change knob to KC2 for single motif. And here's a sample of our knitted motifs. The main point about this last exercise is that you've really got to be very careful when you're programming, and you've got to make all your calculations very logically. Yes, as I watch you develop the theme from the more simple to the more advanced techniques, it seems to me that the system's been emerging. What you have to remember is where you're working on the needle bed. Remembering that the centre is O, zero, and that all the numbers to the left are orange and all the numbers to the right are green. Then you've got to think about how many stitches there are in your pattern repeat. And where do you want the pattern on the garment? How many needles do you think you'll need? And where is the edge of the pattern on the paper, the first needle position? And although I've mentioned that last, it is in fact the first thing that the machine will ask you. This is certainly true. And to help you, if you have any problems placing the pattern on the garment, you can always just physically count your needles out like that. Mm -hmm. Well, we're still working with the advanced patterning technique. 
So what on earth are we going to do now? Ah, next we have something very special in store because next we're going to pattern two separate motifs and we're going to put the second motif on top of the first motif. This pattern can only be done on our electronic machine. It's amazing. Let's look at the graph for pattern 37 in the Stitch World book. The ready light comes on and we'll enter 999 and press the memory button. 999 disappears. Press the memory button again and the pattern number light comes on. We'll put the pattern selector switch to the center opposite the boat and the house for two motifs. Enter 37, which is our pattern number, and press the memory button. The light at the bottom of the boat comes on. The machine is asking us where on the graph we want our pattern to begin. Enter 1, press the memory button. The light at the top of the boat comes on. The machine is asking us where we want the pattern to finish. The top line is 18, press the memory button. The light at the left of the boat comes on and the machine is asking us what do we want the left edge of our pattern to be. We're going to use an all over one by one pattern as a background. This pattern is on our graph on lines 25 and 26. Enter 25 and press the memory button. Now the light at the right edge of the boat comes on. We can enter 26 and press the memory button. Now the light in between the two boats on the garment lights up. Where do we want the first needle of our pattern repeat to be? As the pattern's only two lines wide, we can have it anywhere. So we'll enter green one and press the memory button. The light at the left edge of the boats comes on and the machine's asking, what needles do we want to include in the pattern? We really want the pattern to be over the whole needle bed so that we can increase without worrying about the pattern moving. So we enter orange 100, press the memory button. Where do we want the patterning to finish? We'll have the patterning finish at green 100. Press the memory button. Now the light at the left edge of the house on the cards lights up. What section of the pattern on the graph are we going to isolate from motif B? Let's put one repeat of our geometric pattern in the middle of our knitting right on top of our all over one by one pattern. The left edge of the geometric pattern is 9. Enter 9. Press the memory button. The light at the right edge of the house comes on and the machine is asking where does the pattern on the graph end? Enter 24 and press the memory button. The light in between the two houses on the garment lights up. Where does our pattern repeat begin? Where is the edge of our pattern? The pattern needs 16 needles to complete one repeat. If we put it right in the middle of our knitting, it'll go from orange 8 to green 8. If we have the edge of the pattern, the first needle position, on the edge of the patterning needles, the first needle position is orange 8. Press the memory button. The light at the left of the houses lights up. Where do we want this pattern to begin? We'll enter orange 8, press the memory button. And where do we want this pattern to end? The light at the right of the houses comes on. We'll enter green 8 and press the memory button. Now we're ready to start knitting. is our knitted pattern. We found out how to use the programs that live in the machine from the Stitchwell book in both a simple and an advanced way. But what other advantages has this magic machine got? Well, there's a special window on our pattern panel that gives us extra information. It helps us when we're knitting multicolored fair isle patterns and it helps us when we're knitting lace. If we program in a multicolored fair isle pattern, the window will tell us when to change the yarn in feeder B. Let's program the machine to knit fair isle pattern 77. Now I'm sure you can remember what to do. 
The ready light comes on, enter 990 for simple patterning and press the memory button. 990 disappears. Press the memory button again and the pattern number light comes on. Put the pattern selector switch to the bottom for all over patterning and enter 77 for our stitch pattern. Press the memory button and the ready light comes on and tells us the machine is ready to begin knitting. Take the carriage outside the turn mark and turn the change knob to KC1 to get the pattern connected to the needles. Knit one row, and now we press the yellow button, and the number in the panel window tells us what color yarn we want to put in the second feeder for our multicolored pattern. Number one is always the main yarn, and we can see number two in the window. Press the multicolored button to tell the carriage to knit Fair Isle. Now if we look at the panel window, we can see number three has come up. This means we've got to take number two out and put in color three. Then we continue knitting. Now we can see number four has come up in our panel window. So we'll take number three out and put in color number four. At any time, we can press the green button and the number in the panel will revert back to the row number of our stitch pattern. We press the yellow button again and it tells us what the color of our contrast yarn should be. And here is a sample of the knitted fabric. When you want to knit a lace pattern, the information you're going to need from your pattern panel window is going to be quite different. Now you're going to have to know when to move the lace carriage and when to move the knitting carriage. Let's program a lace pattern. When the ready light is on, we enter 990 and press the memory button. 990 vanishes and we press the memory button again and the pattern number light comes on. Put the pattern selector switch to the bottom for an all over pattern and enter 130, which is the number of our lace pattern. Press the memory button and the machine is ready to start knitting. Now we have to know when to use the lace carriage and when to use the knitting carriage. So we'll press the yellow button and look in the panel. It's blank. That means we use the lace carriage. We can see number two has come up in the panel window now. The machine is telling us to knit two rows with our knitting carriage. Use the lace carriage again, and the window goes blank. Two comes up again. That means we've got to knit two rows with the knitting carriage. Back to the lace carriage. Now the knitting carriage. And here's our lace. We've seen how the pattern panel window helps us when we're doing normal lace. But now we're going to combine normal lace with fine lace. Let's program a lace pattern. Switch the machine on. When the ready light comes on, enter 990, press the memory button. Until the pattern number light comes on, enter 221 for our lace pattern and press the memory button. The ready light comes on, the machine's ready to start knitting, but let's press the yellow button to see what information we can get from the panel. There's a zero flashing in the panel, and that's telling us that we want our lace carriage to have the switch on N for open lace. 
move the lace carriage until we have a flashing one. That tells us that we have to alter the switch on our lace carriage to F for fine lace. Now we see two in the window. The machine is telling us to knit two rows with our knitting carriage. The flashing O comes on again, and we move the switch to N for open lace. Now we have a flashing one, so we move the switch to F for fine lace. Now we have two. That's telling us that we want to knit two rows with our knitting carriage. Flashing O, move the switch to N. Flashing 1, move the switch to F for fine lace. 2, which isn't flashing, and we'll knit two rows with our knitting carriage. Here's a sample of our lace and fine lace combined. There are some switches on our panel that we haven't talked about yet. These are the pattern variation switches on the left-hand side, and you may have wondered what they do. Each one has a different job to do. So the machine continues to take the hard work out of the knitting. Can you talk us through what each of those switches does? Yes, of course. If we look at the sample on the bottom, we see the pattern exactly as it appears in the Stitch World book. Now, if we move up, we see what happens when we put switch number one up. This will reverse our pattern. Move up again, and we see what happens when we put switch number three and switch number four up. Switch number three will double the width of our pattern. Switch number four doubles the length. Move on to the next sample, and we can see what happens when we put switch number five up. We'll start knitting our pattern at the bottom, and when we get to the top, instead of going back to the beginning again, we knit the pattern from the top back down again to the bottom. That's on simple patterning. If we had advanced patterning, we would just knit that motif upside down all the time. With the next sample, we can see what happens when we put switch number six up. This reverses our needle selection system so that the needles that knit the background before now knit contrast, and the needles that knit the contrast color before now knit the background. On our last sample, this shows what happens when we put switch number seven up. This enables us to knit a double bed jacquard fabric with the ribber and the color changer. This means we get a fabric with no floats on the back. That's pretty incredible, Janet. But I noticed you didn't mention switch number two. What does that one do? Ah, you've caught me out there. Switch number two is our very special switch. You remember when I said we put switch number one up and it reversed the first motif that we programmed in, motif A? Mm -hmm. If we put switch number two up, we're reversing motif B, our second motif. That is all the information we put on the pattern panel on the second half of our patterning. So the capability of the pattern panel really makes the Brother 950 Electronic absolutely unique. This is certainly true. In addition to the stitch patterns that are on the chip that lives in the machine, there's a blank space for storing our own designs. Yeah. We can put our own designs in and they'll stay there until we put a new one in its place. That space is exactly 150 rows long and 60 stitches wide, the same size as our Mylar sheet. Can we draw literally anything on the Mylar sheet? Absolutely anything. Come and I'll show you. It's a good idea when you're doing your designs to try them out on a paper design sheet first before you transfer them onto the Mylar sheet. Mm -hmm. Remember, every square is a stitch. I'll show you how to mark the sheet. We'll use these three designs. At the bottom, we have a boat and house. Then we've got a lace pattern. And I've got my signature. <laughs> but of course, you'll put your own where mine was. When you mark the card, you'll use a special pen.
Mm -hmm. You press the tip to get the ink flowing and then stop because you don't want the ink to flood. You actually mm -hmm. use the pen very gently when you mark the sheet. Line the sheet up carefully. That's quite important, is it? Oh, absolutely. And then, when you're marking your designs, dot the paper very gently with your pen. Take you quite a time to do that accurately. You start from the top and work down, start from the left and work across. With this first pattern, we can mark the color changes in the right-hand column. With the lace pattern, we can mark the left-hand column to tell us when to move our knitting carriage. Mm -hmm. What about the signature? Any problems with that? Well, I would suggest when you're doing your signature on your paper design sheet, you use a broad felt-tipped pen because when you transfer it to the Mylar sheet, it's easier to transfer and it makes a more effective pattern. Right, Wendy, I can see you finished marking the card. That's lovely. Now let's put it in the machine and see how it knits up. We enter it in the card slot. We have to do this with the machine turned off. We can't move the card when the machine is turned on. Right. You have to be accurate about this, presumably. Yes, you see that set line? Mm -hmm. We have to line that up very carefully before we turn the machine on. Once we've turned the machine on, we can program it. Ready light comes on, push the memory button and the pattern number light comes on. We have to tell the machine we want it to go to the Mylar sheet to read. Enter 901, press the memory button. The light at the bottom of the boat lights up. The machine is asking us what the bottom line on the card is. If we look on the right-hand side, we can see the lines are numbered. The bottom line is 1. Enter 1, press the memory button. The top line is 36. Press the memory button. The machine is asking us where the left edge of our pattern on the card is. If we look along the bottom, we can see that stitches are numbered. The left edge is 1. Where does the pattern finish? We can see the stitches at the bottom are numbered up to 40, mm -hmm. so we'll enter 40. Press the memory button and the ready light comes on. Now we have to tell the machine to go and read the card, so we press CF. What does that mean? Oh, card forward. Yes, of course. The machine is now reading the information on the Mylar sheet. When it's finished, it returns to row one. If the red arrow light came on, the machine would be telling us that we had forgotten to wipe off the previous pattern we had stored on the chip. So we would have to push the red CE button and then RR to wipe off that previous pattern before we could begin again. I see. Take the carriage outside the turn mark and turn the change knob round to KC1. Knit a row to set our needles. Put the second color in the second feeder and press the MC button to tell the machine we want to do multicolor knitting. You heard the beep beep and you saw the card go back to row one. That was the machine finishing the pattern. And here's an example of what we've just knitted. Right, Wendy, now I'd like to show you how we can put all the information from your card into the machine and then we can call up only a small section of it to knit separately. We could knit an all-over pattern from one part of the card mm -hmm. and motif A, your signature, from another part of the card. And then we can knit the house and the boat separately as motif A and motif B. We put the card in and line the set line up just as we did before, turn the machine on and we're ready to begin programming. The ready light is on, press the memory button, the pattern number light comes up. We've got to tell the machine that we want to look at the Mylar card, so we'll
put in 901. Press the memory button and the bottom of the boat lights up. As we're putting the whole card in, we'll just enter number one at this point. The top of the boat lights up, and the machine is asking us where we want to stop reading the Mylar sheet. We'll read the whole sheet, so we put in 150. Press the memory button. At the left, the sheet begins at stitch one. Press the memory button. At the right, the, the sheet ends at stitch 60. Press the memory button. Now, we're ready to Tell the machine to read the sheet. Press CF. And off it goes. That's right. What is it actually doing? Is it reading every line? Now? Yes, what we're seeing now is the machine carefully reading all the information that you've recorded, and it reads it line by line and stores it on that space we talked about on the chip. We have to wait for it to go right to the end of the card. And when it's come to the end, it tells us it's ready to begin again. By rolling back to the first line. Very easy. Now we're ready to reprogram the machine to knit the lace as an all over pattern. We go back to the pattern panel, press the memory button. When the pattern number light comes up, enter 901 for the Mylar sheet. Press the memory button, and the machine is asking us, what's the bottom line of our stitch pattern? The bottom line of the lace is 41. Press the memory button. The top line of the lace is 80. Press the memory button. The left line of our lace pattern is 1. Press the memory button. The right edge is 30. Press the memory button. And the ready light comes on. Now we have to program in the first row and tell the machine to go and read that row on the Mylar sheet. So we enter the number of the first row, which was 41, and press CF. And we're ready to begin. And here's a sample of our lace knitting. Well, now, Wendy, comes an exciting moment. <laughs> We're going to take your signature and put it on our knitting. Right. But we have to remember to put switch number one up, otherwise we'll have it backwards. <laughs> that would never do, would it? Certainly not. <laughs> the ready light comes on, and we'll program it in. Press the memory button. The pattern number light comes on. We enter 901 for the Mylar sheet. And we'll put our pattern selector switch up to the top for a single motif. Press the memory button. And the bottom of the boat lights up on the card. The machine's asking where your signature begins. It begins on row 130. Press the memory button. The signature ends on row 147. Press the memory button. The signature begins on stitch 10. Press the memory button. And it ends on 48. Press the memory button. Your signature is 39 stitches wide. We're going to have it centrally on our knitting. So we'll have it go from orange 19 to green 20. And we'll have the edge of the pattern on the edge of the patterning needles. We enter orange 19 for the edge of the pattern. And now we enter orange 19 for the edge of the patterning needles. We want the pattern to finish on green 20. Press the memory button, and we're ready to knit. But we have to tell the machine to go to 